Hey everybody, it's Ron and Hope Unfiltered. Here we are, season three, episode 39. That is hard to believe. Season three, three years of this. I just don't think the audience understands I'm injured. <laughs> Ron, we were not even discussing you. We were discussing the podcast. And I'm having to plow through pain. Okay, everybody. Ron has two tears in his right meniscus. You need to send him some cards. I'm not feeling a lot of love. You need to send him some flowers, especially December 2nd, because he's having surgery. No, 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 not flowers. Gift cards. Gift cards. Where to, Ron? What you like? I'm easy. No, you're not. (laughs) (laughs) No. What do you like? I am. I got my legs stretched out. Hey, I'm in I, I pain. think Ron loves Amazon. Send him some Amazon no, gift Ron's cards. Ron's never gotten Amazon in his life. But I could help you figure <coughs> yeah, it out. I know how that will go. Well, you could send all the cards Tell and letters. Tell them what the surgeon said, though. I've actually got to have an operation. I just said that. I don't know how I heard it. It's called age. I don't know how I heard it. No, she said you... Most likely had injured it at one time one or another. The, one thing I was always so proud of is that I was a receiver. Oh, Lord. Receivers Here we are go. Not, receivers are notorious for knee injuries. Here we go. And then I was a basketball player, and I broke 18 bones. I've had numerous injuries, but I never, ever had a knee injury. Till now. I've seen people with knee injuries. I know the grabbing the leg and the intense pain. I have never had that moment. So I have no idea. I have two tears in my meniscus. I'm telling you. You said I did it. I think when we were scuffling. <laughs> scuffling. <laughs> I think oh, me and you scuffling. God, I might have torn it. Wrestling. I think we might have tore it. Mm, okay. Me trying to get away from you. Nonetheless. And hurt it, twisted it. You have hurt your knee. I have. And you got to have surgery. So, DC. We were going to try to start try some new things, but they said it wouldn't help, right? Right. Going to get some injections. They were like, no, that does not fix a tear. It'll help the inflammation. So, Ron had to be conquered. What does that mean? That means we had to team up against you, me and the doctor, to get you to have surgery. I don't want to have surgery. Guys don't like surgery. Maybe I don't think anybody does, but sometimes you well, have women to. Women kind of elect to do it. Well, men no, do too. No men elect to do it, really. Really? Uh, not really. Yeah, they do. Well, anyway. You're having it. Uh, I can't believe it. Just had an operation on my face this year, and now i got to go have an oper- That'll be two operations in one year. I have never, and I've never had operations before. I've never, like, really been cut on. Baby, you are not 21 anymore. What does that mean? <laughs> it means the older you get, that body has some aches and pains. You have not read my Bible. Right. He renews my youth, and he renews my strength. He makes me 20 again. No, okay. Okay. I mount up on wings with eagles. Mm-hmm. That means I see further. And Please I fly stop higher. jumping that. I got to... My, ah. mouth was, my mouth was dry, and I have fajitas, and I have a good taste in my what? mouth. what? Fajitas. Fajitas? Mm-hmm. Fajitas. So, How do you spell that? You're wasting these folks' time. Four minutes with Me? time. Me? I just want everybody to know I am injured. Ron, we know. Everybody knows you're never, injured. I never get to go out and tell anybody I'm injured. But I want everybody to know I'm injured. Okay. So let's have a word of prayer. So I'm not praying. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not laying hands on anybody. I need somebody to lay hands okay. on me. Okay. We're going to pray. Why'd you jump? <laughs> You scared. You scared of me. <laughs> anyway, y'all pray for, for your pastor. You pray for Pastor Ron. He needs some attention. Swollen. He needs attention. Okay. Actually, when I walk, it does all right if I keep walking. It's when I get off of it and stand back up. Yeah. That's when it hurts. I'm sorry, baby. But anyway. you hurting. When, when am I having my... I've said it three times. November? December. December. Second. God, right before Christmas. They said you won't be down but a couple of days. Okay. All right. I'm having an operation. Pray for me. Okay. Today, we're going to talk about... How to... Date your spouse. Mm -hmm. 
We're going to talk about dating your spouse. If we're not serious, we're going to get back silly again. I don't today, know. Right? <coughs> Probably. Sometimes we need to be serious. We can't be silly every single time. We're we not. Out. It's when you get in a silly mood. What's one of the most memorable de- memorable dates? God, jump right in. <laughs> that you can remember while we were dating. While we were dating? Because I had no money, and we were at the most isolated college One of the most memorable Earth, dates. In the middle of nowhere. Was Valentine's. It was me and my roommate, Sherry. That was y'all's date. Ron, listen. That was y'all's. And uh, Shelly. who else? Was Shelly it Shelly? It was Shelly. Yeah. And um, we blindfolded you guys after our banquet. We they don't know what's coming now. We all made pies. I made a pie. Shelly made a pie. And Where Sherry. did you make a pie at college? Downstairs in the basement in our little area down there. Anyway, we made you desserts, and we blindfolded you, and we we had a, we had, we had this, a banquet, didn't be we? Quiet. We a yes, and then we already had like these blankets and candles and boom boxes with slow music playing down at the lake where we were going, this little park, and we blindfolded y'all and took you down there. And had a little romantic dessert. Y'all see what I had to put up with? I was trying <laughs> to go to Bible school and be preaching and be holy. I was trying to I was trying to learn the life of holiness. Mm-hmm. And I start dating this girl who spreads out blankets at a lake and makes me desserts and takes there me there. There was no chairs, Ryan. At nightfall. <clears throat> we had to have somewhere to see it. But that just tells people how strong I had to be. Yep, and you were. I was strong, yes. wasn't I? I was strong. But that was a fun night. We planned it. Not for one of them, Stephen no, didn't like Stephen it. Stephen didn't like Stephen. it. He said he was getting car sick, and he made us all miserable. But um, He was blindfolded. He was getting car sick. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow. That's how creative we had to be. It, when it, you know, we're, number one, we're talking the 80s, and number two, we're talking... Everybody was broke at my college. Right. I don't understand these universities. <laughs> I drive up to them day and there's BMW convertibles and Corvettes. We were, you know, everybody had pieces of junk and they didn't have run and nobody had any money. Right. And so we had to have like creative ideas to date because, you know, just going out for a night on the town and blowing all kind of money, we didn't have it. No. Nope. And uh, <clears throat> I remember that. I remember us being intentional about a lot of things that just meant for quality time. It wasn't all together so much. We had Act- a lot of fun. Activity driven. In our date, in our dating years. We dated three three years before we got married. But that's what I wanted to talk about today is how, why do we lose that? Or how do we lose that? I could make out a much broader conversation. You know, because we, you know, the bottom line is we are extremely intentional when we're dating. We get creative. We are How many excited. stuffed animals did you have by the time we got through dating? Oh, dear Lord, Ron. You bought me so many. What were they called? Pound puppies at Hardies? McDonald's. McDonald's or Hardee's or something? Yeah. When you'd go bought get you your food, you could get them. a pound puppy for like $1.99. Like Christmas and Valentine's and stuff. I always bought you stuff. You had like a room full mm-hmm. by the time that three years was over with. And then pound puppies, what, $1.99? Mm-hmm. But I would bring it to you, and you'd just act like I just handed you the keys to a car mm-hmm. because your love language is gifts. Gifts. So I was always buying flowers. You never were real crazy about flowers, but it was a gesture. I was always letting you know. I was always and buying stuff. And we always animals. made a point to date. Always. Always. It was like every Friday night. What are we doing Friday? What are we doing Saturday? Every night at ten o'clock. Yeah, we met. We were ve- I, we were very busy in college. It was amazing. We had a we had a I had like a timekeeper thing in college because we were involved in so many things. We were very scheduled. A timekeeper. You know what do you call them back then? The daytimer things. Oh or, yeah. I remember having one of them in college. Yeah. And uh, because, I mean, we, we toured with the touring groups. I, I toured with a smaller group. I, I played basketball. We were you, busy. You, we, we had three jobs, you know, and not counting classes. And I told them, I said, sometimes I felt like I went to college on the side. And um, so long and short of it, I remember every night at 10 o'clock. We would meet. I'd come park. over there and pick you up. We would go park in And we, we would park, and she would try to, like, kiss and stuff. But I just wanted to talk. <laughs> 
that she would try to kiss and stuff. I just wanted to talk. Stuff. I just wanted to talk. Okay. And be with you. But it was every night, and it was intentional. Even then. Yes. Even Why? then. Why? At 10 o'clock, that's his because time at your time. being with you was priority. Superseded everything else. It was priority to me. And then we get married. What happens? Right? And then we stop all of that. All of that stops. The priority, I guess we think, because we're, now we're living together, that's not important. But there have been so many divorces because the person doesn't feel prioritized. The person doesn't feel valued. Can I hit something that I think is a myth? How many times did we hear when we were dating and when we were young married, you know, enjoy it, enjoy your you, because you're not always going to feel like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I admit, I don't think I'm a normal guy. I don't think I'm wired normal. There's been times I've been mad. There's been times I've been hurt. There's been times I've been disappointed. But in the regular day in and day out of our marriage, I have never had a day ever that I woke up and didn't feel feelings for you. I have never experienced oh. that day. I don't, I, I'm not saying it's a cop out because I've heard it so much. It must be the mass numbers of people experience. I've heard it from Christians. I would hate to be in a relationship where it was commitment only, void of feelings. But, you know, I do a teaching at our marriage conference that talks about, you know, the different kinds of love. And so many people do say, you know, when you lose the butterflies, commitment kicks in. But no, there, I believe that. I do, too. I believe that. I do, too. But there is something in the natural that you can do to keep your feelings. And that's called being intentional to sow into the other person's yep. love tank. And that's what we're talking about in dating. It's I think, the intentionality. I think we, by nature, the nature of our ministry, we attract probably a, a, a crowd that deems themselves as somewhat spiritual. I think there's some things we over-spiritualize. For instance, physiology. Okay, let's move. Oh, you can't remove God from anything. But let's take... You know, the, the church Christian life element out of it. Let's take, you know, the agape love of God. Let's, let's remove all that in a minute. Psychology data, wiring you, wiring you up, says when you kiss, kiss longer than eight seconds. Because at the eighth second, there is a huge release of dopamine in your body. And other things. That builds, that builds significant <laughs> feelings of bonding. They say hug for 20 seconds. At least. Now, let's just reveal some of our personal. Okay, every morning, morning. of your life, yep. I'm usually, not always, usually up before you a little bit. I go fix the coffee. And then when you smell the coffee or get stirred or whatever, you come walking in a little bit later. If I'm in the kitchen, if I'm in the bathroom, if I'm in the bedroom, if I'm in the den, you come walking straight, straight to, to me. You. And we hug. And you open your arms up and you stand there. And we hug and we stand there. We stand there. And it is true. You can't do that. And then all of a sudden you start leaning feeling. in. You, you lean start in. feeling. You start, want, you start, you know, the hug. It, you go from good morning hug to deep sense of connection mm -hmm. these are these are physiological biological facts and these are not huge things but it's being intentional it's being intentional we it is the first thing we do yeah we do it before we go to the bathroom yeah we go and we embrace if if you're up first i'll come in there and i'll go straight to you and i hold you there and it ain't like you're trying to get away, but I mean, I hold you there until that thing happens. Right. And that thing happens. And then you almost get where we don't we don't want to let go. We just this feels good. Let's just stand here a minute. And um why why is that so hard? 
after 15, 20, 25 years of marriage. Why is, why is it? The bottom line, if we could just going to be very honest, is you don't, you don't think it matters anymore. You haven't made it a priority. You haven't seen the benefit of it. You think it just maintains itself or it, it just happens. It does not maintain itself. It's just like our body. Our body does not maintain itself. We have to maintain it. A house doesn't just stay clean. You have to clean it. So for a That's marriage to good. stay in love, you have to do certain elements. Okay. I attempt, and we're not the marriage gurus, but we got we, a good one. We got something to say. We've, we've been in the best of times, and we sure enough has been in the worst of times. So when you got somebody who's made it this long through all that stuff, you know, you listen to them a little bit. I know I, for any man out there listening, I try to send you messages all day. I'm not talking about text messages. I try to send you but messages. You do send text I do send text messages. messages. Sometimes they're hilarious. Sometimes they're extremely nice. graphic. Yep, and I'm ashamed after I do it. Yeah, right. And uh, sometimes they're just, I love you, be careful, you know. But I try. That that's It's not random. It is, I want to send you messages, you know, from bringing you your coffee to the forehead kiss when you're laying on the bed and I'm saying, I'm not ready yet, go on to sleep, babe. It's, you know, the, the stuff ready for you when you get out of the bath. Uh, do you want me to get out of the car? Are you going to take a bath? you want me to run a bath for you? And it's not, um, oh, God, I got to run her bath. It's, it's just sending messages. Serving ha- opens the heart it does. of other people. It is very hard to be angry at somebody who serves you. It's true. When you feel like somebody is a taker, mm-hmm. you can get bitter resentful right. and all types of hard heartedness issues can begin to come in. But when somebody's constantly serving, so mine, I'll let you say how you do it. Mine to you is I just try to do small, very small. Hmm. Acts, I've, you've had two hip surgeries in our bathroom. Our towel is slick as the top of this table. I don't want you to fall. It is very common if I'm there when you get out of the tub, I'll get down and wipe off your feet. Eight seconds, no big deal. With two torn, ta- with two tears in your meniscus, you but, still do but it. But what is it? Just, you're number one. You're, I'm taking care of you. You're my baby. You know, it's just, and my goal is all day long, from morning to that night, you're hearing something or feeling something that says, this guy is nuts about me. He is nuts about me. What do you do? I'm going to put you on the spot. What are, some thing, what are some things you want to do that you know this right here Sex. Me, mean is run? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm a little more run, than that. Run. Run does all the little things so that I can turn around and give him sex. Oh, I do all the little things a lot of times that don't get no sex. I run. Love it. But Ryan, no, I know what your love language is, and it is physical touch. It's quality time. You I, sitting with you at night, and just sitting there on the couch. I know you. I'm tell you something that. you did last night. That was very meaningful to me. You, I didn't say nothing. I don't know if it was random. Or I don't know if it was intentional. My stuff is intentional. Maybe I have a random thing every once in a while. We're sitting there last night. It's long day. Tuesdays are long, long day. We get home, you know, terrible traffic, all this and that and other. Put on pajamas, do what we got to do. We actually had to pack our bags because we got a little trip we got to take. And uh, so we finally got in the den, sit down. And I go in there, and you got your little corner I sit in. I was sitting probably two or three feet away from you. And you were leaning up against a pillow. You sat up, put the pillow down flat between us, and reached out, and on the pillow we held hands. Mm-hmm. We're up on a mountain. We're all by ourselves. Ain't nobody looking. We're, we're not trying hands. to. We're not trying to do an Instagram post. Nobody to impress. 
and it's 11 o'clock at night, and we're holding hands. That's the stuff to me of lifelong love. That's right. You know, to me. And it's being intentional. The dating, the actual dating, we still do that. It was hard to do that when we had children. Kids. Kids was tough. But we still did it. We didn't do it as often, but we made it a point at least once a month. We would do it once a month, sometimes twice a month. And I hear people today, we don't have enough money to buy to get babysitters. or we, Yes, you do. Because, I, I mean, you spend it, your money on everything else. What is more important? Sewing into the life of your marriage, into your spouse, or going to Starbucks six times a week. Yes, you do. Because I always heard something that scared me. That when the kids came, and our life was crazy. We went through a lot of difficult times. But I hear when kids come that everything then, you know, starts revolving around, around the them. kids. And then once the last one steps out in this empty nest, you look at this stranger. Yeah. Like, oh, my God, it's just me and it's just this person. And I've let it go for 20 years. Now yeah. I don't know what to do. Yeah. And, and you know, you can you can make excuses and say, well, we got ball and we got this and we got piano and we got we that. Did too. We did, too. But da- you don't have to date. Dating is not just Friday night at seven o'clock. Dating is after they go to school and you run by and eat breakfast together. It's during lunch break at work and you meet for lunch. You know, it's you can make it what you want it. Put them to bed at night and make a picnic and go get on the trampoline in the backyard and lay down and look out, look up at the stars and hold hands and talk. Mm -hmm. That's a date. But it's. But, but I want to go back to the bigger issue. We'll go back to the bigger issue, psychologically, whatever you want to call it. Why is that so hard? Because I'm sitting here listening to you. Yeah. I'm like simple, sitting there listening to me. Hold her hand. You know, don't let her fall down. Wipe her feet off. These are not huge things. Right. Why is this so hard? I think I think life sometimes. You know, you have a lot of hurdles in relationships, and then you get a hurt. And then the ne- then you hurt the next one. Then the next one hurts mm-hmm. you, and you start piling up these hurts, and these resentments, and you got you a heart of stone. Fo- yes, and then you start focusing on everything they're not doing right. You're focusing on how they chew and chew their candy loud mm-hmm. and chew their ice real loud, and it gets on your nerves, and you start letting that be your focus, when that is that should never be your focus. We all got hang-ups and we all got pain you know in in love we have to really actually walk out that first corinthians 13 keeping no record of wrong expecting the best hoping for the best hopes believing all things the believes best. all things yep. right and, being um, slow to anger we've 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 counseled so many <coughs> pastors and wives and but other people but a lot of leaders over the years, and when we start delving into the marriage, and we've been in some rooms where it got bad, <laughs> and where you know we we were brought into somebody's marital problem, and all of a sudden we're like, "Whoo, we have stepped into a hornet's nest." A hornet's nest, yeah. Um, I noticed over the years, I used to preach a message on small things. You remember that message? I do. I've never had anybody come into my office and say, "Pastor, we're getting a divorce." Why? Because he won't take me on a Caribbean cruise. Never had anybody say, we're splitting up Why? because I want a Bentley and he won't buy it. I have heard this. We never hold hands. We don't talk. He never spends time he with He don't me. ever spend time with me. We don't communicate. I don't ever hear big things. Mm-hmm. But the Bible even said it's the little foxes yeah, that's- that it's the little foxes that spoil the vines and it's the flies that get in the ointment. ointment. And so I think the we might try to do the big things right and run the big things right. We overlook a million small yep. things. Yep. And if I go back to what is really meaningful, 
is when you had to go do a come hire conference and and I ain't crazy about you being gone two weeks in a row because I like having my wife around. And then I get up that morning. You had to get up at five, go catch a plane. I got up at seven. And there's a heart with lipstick on the mirror. I always do that. That is so. Oh, man. <laughs> that just. Anytime I have bring to it leave on. before you, I take bring my lipstick, on. do bring a heart, and tell you I love you. You have drawn some dirty pictures I at times. I have not. You have, and I'm embarrassed and I'm ashamed you of you right now. You've drawn some things on there that mm. was childish. Mm-hmm. And you shouldn't have done really? it looking back on it. That's right. But but you, like you were just saying, message, you look at the big things and forget the little things. When in that your took office, you 30 seconds. In your <laughs> office, and you say peop, the woman sit, doesn't talk about the Caribbean cruise he hadn't taken her on. You don't talk to me. You don't smile. You don't you know, spend time with me. And then he'll reply or she'll re- vice versa. He'll say, well, I don't cheat on you. And I don't do drugs. The big things. Yeah, it's the b- big things. Thinking, well, I don't do you know these big things to you, but do you do the small? things? Do you things? do the small things? It's not the big things. It's always, it's always the small things. I, I don't remember the how how many different nice cars you've had. Oh, I'm, I'm, if you start held a gun to my head, and I don't either. But I remember. But I remember I notes. I remember things you said. I remember things you do. I remember, you know, I remember times walking down a beach. It didn't cost me any money. We just walked down the beach. I know times sitting out on the back porch and talking about how close the moon looks to. I mean, but I do. And those love are our it times. That you're also intentional. Like tonight, you're taking me out of town for yes, two I nights, am. and we put those on our calendar every three months. Every three months, and everything we take two nights, and y'all. everything that don't get hard. done, everything that don't get done has to wait. Yeah. Because I'm not answering the phone and I'm not doing work, and they know it here. Whatever, you better get me before I leave. Because these two days I'm not answering the phone and I'm not doing it because she's got my attention. And so here again, I just go back to, you know, dating your spouse, the the intentionalization of little things that keep the the dopamine high, right? That keep the ah, wow the. And the, you better believe in when we were dating. I was going to shave my legs. I was going to have my hair fixed. I was going to be dre- I mean, I planned Them toenails are going to be red. I planned what I was going to wear. And when we get married, we just sort of turn like it turn it bl- loose and, and we're blah. And we you don't never care. did that. You but never did I, that. I have not done you've that. Never you've never did that. You've not done that either. I told you, I always appreciated the fact you cared about your presentation to me. Not just your presentation. You cared about your presentation to me. Right. And I always appreciated that because we have had, we've counseled others where, well, you know what? He just, he's let himself go so bad and his health. But you do talk about my hygiene has slipped lately. Well, I wasn't going to uncover you. I was going to let that, I was going to cover you and you you went and revealed yourself. You say hope. You going to wash that hair? You going to wash that hair today? Because we're sitting there watching TV, and I got my fingers in it, and it's like, <laughs> stop, <laughs> stop it. When I come my hand out and it's greasy, I'm Hush. like, you know what, baby, we might need to quit putting dry shampoo on it. Mm, okay. What they used to do back in the old country folk put baby powder you put on baby it. Baby powder in when it was hair. greasy. You yes. Put- <laughs> if you had blonde hair, we you got sure people. Could. We got city folk watching us that are like, what? Have never heard of they that. Love they us. would. If you have, if your hair was greasy and they have time to wash it, they would put baby powder on your head. If you had blonde hair, yes, y'all. Let's just summarize it. <laughs> let's summarize this talk today. Summarizing, this is what Ron Ron would say to the young couple or the older couple who feel like they've lost it. Sometimes a marriage ending up in the right place or returning to the right place is not a million dollars of therapy. Sometimes it is making the decision. The things I did when I was falling in love, I'm going to do to stay in love. Because it obviously worked. Right. I'm going to do to stay in love. The thing that drew you, the thing that you did to fall in love worked. So why not keep doing it? Yes. What have you stopped doing? I wanted I wanted you to feel special. And, you know, 34 years later, I still want you 
to feel special. I don't ever want you to feel like you have to go somewhere else to feel special. I want you to feel special at my house. And so those are never big things. Because of the season of life we're in, we get to do more nice things by far than we did back then. But whatever we had the resources to do, we did it. Yep. We did it. And and I would just say it's not the big things, guys. Not- it is a million little chances to stoke the fires that we we gloss over them because we don't see them as significant. And I would, have, I would argue they're all significant. They are. They're all significant. All the compliments are significant. Clearly, you, you see there's a void if you've stopped doing it and you don't have the butterflies and you don't have the feelings. Why not try it? Why not implement it? Put it back into practice and see what God can do with and it. And if you have gotten a, a stony heart or you sense that your spouse has it before you start it, it might seem disingenuous, disingenuous, unless you first own. I haven't been doing this. Yeah. I think there needs to be a talk. You know what? We got to be better. I listened to Ron and Hope on that podcast, and I've there's just a lot of things I've let go, and I miss a million moments a day where I could send you a message of how important you are to me, and I want you to know I'm going to make intentional. Uh, I'm going to make intentional decisions to change that. I think sometimes you got to kind of pull the, what it called the pull Scab. the pull the yeah you got to kind of, and and there may be some tears and some owning it involved. It may even be a little bit of a tense conversation because if you've gone ten years, yeah, going through the motions, feeling like you yeah. have not been valued, you kind of got to deal Might with have that. To have some hard yeah, conversations. you got to you got to deal with that, and then come around and say. I'm asking your forgiveness, and from this moment forward, be patient with me because I'm going to try to make sure that I don't overlook the small messages I can send throughout the day and hope it's just not hard. It's just being mindful. It's true. It's being mindful. Yeah. Well, let me go first this time. I don't usually do it. I usually let Hope go first. But uh, we decided to make a change here. We, we enjoy doing this, and we're glad you guys are here. So don't cut us off right yet. We were stopping and advertising for other companies. Mm-hmm. And we just said, you know what? Why don't we take some time and let people know what we do? And um, because we feel like what we do has benefit. And uh, I have, I'm, I'm very content driven. Uh, by content, uh, if you go on my social media, I don't care much about foolishness. I don't care much about games or even trying to be funny. I care that my what I say is helping somebody. So I've taken 30 years of teaching and archived it in something called The Vault. You can only get it through the Ron Carpenter app. If you download the Ron Carpenter app, you'll see it. It is a subscription, but that subscription helps me pay for all the management fees and the getting this stuff digitally remastered all the way back to the cassette tape days. And uh, we've now compiled this and put it together and uh, for a small, very small monthly fee, the price of what one message used to cost on the CD, mm-hmm. you can have my entire archive on the vault. And I'm just going to tell you. Listen, guys, you pay more for Netflix let me tell you something. Hope, than for this. When and I this was, is life changing. When I was a young Christian or a young preacher, I would have given anything because right. I would go to somebody's conference and pay $28 for their four cassette tapes. Right. You know, and this is everything I've ever done for nine ninety nine, and I would love to see a lot of you being helped out by the vault. You can customize what you want said, and every topic imaginable. You got something great yeah. too. It's the inner circle, <coughs> and it is my arm of mentorship. And you know, I was just thinking, wow, what a great gift that would be to give somebody. Coming is up the on gift. the holidays, yes, yeah, the gift of mentorship, the gift of, you know, somebody speaking wisdom and life into you. And if you have friends, if you have a daughter, if you have a sister, uh, somebody that you know could really benefit for, from accountability, from wisdom, from a community of people who are there to to lock arms with you, to watch you grow, to help you. You know, some so many people, Ron, don't have the resources, don't even know where to start. So I think that's one of the most valuable things in being a part of a mentorship group is somebody facilitating for you 
you know, your content. So I've got that for you. I'd love for you to join. It's called Hope's Inner Circle. Go to hopesinnercircle.com and join. You get my book for free and your first month for free. So sign somebody else up. Be a blessing to somebody else. I'll watch you do it. I've done it with you. The content is phenomenal. And seeing the work that you've put in it has been somewhat inspiring. I'm really proud of the way you've done the Inner Circle thing. It's really, really great stuff. And you know what? We love our podcast community, our podcast family. In some ways, it's a little different than even our church family. But I hope whether you're laughing or whether you're crying or whether we're being serious, we're blessing you in some way every time we get to talk to you. And it's Ron and Hope Unfiltered, real, raw, and relevant. Catch you next time.